Hey guys, Richard Holdner here and welcome to the channel. If you are a supercharged guy, one of the worst things you can experience is belt slippage. The only thing worse than that is when the damper slips on the crankshaft. Today we're going to show you how to cure it and what happens when you do. In this video, we're going to take a look at what happens when you cure the damper slipping on the crankshaft. We've got a supercharged Ella with exactly that problem. So this is a how-to video on how to pin the crankshaft to the damper. We're also going to show you exactly what happens when we cure this. Well, this video is primarily a how to pin your crankshaft for supercharged applications. We want to show you why you need to go about doing this and what happens if you don't. And here's a perfect example when we were running a STS uh, positive displacement supercharger on a 4.8 liter. So we need to obviously start from the very beginning on our test motor and show you what happened when we actually had the dampener spinning on the crank before we pinned it. So this was our 4.8 liter and we could take a look at the specs on this before we get to our supercharger. We ran the thing naturally aspirated and then ran it supercharged. And I'll show you a perfect example of why we do that because it shows us what's happening once we add the blower to this thing. So this is a 4.8 liter and LR4. It had long since been uh, rebuilt built or as a matter of fact all we did really was put pistons in it still had the stock block stock crank stock gen 4 rods and we put je very small dome pistons in this thing if this was like 10 over it had stock 706 heads with a valve spring upgrade the reason that we did that because we ran a bunch of camshafts through this thing it still had the jfr cam which is a 595 lift 224 228 degree duration split and 112 degree lobe, lobe separation angle. We ran this thing with a stock early truck intake and throttle body. When we ran it NA, we ran a set of inch and seven eighths long tube headers and with collector extensions on it. We ran this thing on 91 when it was naturally aspirated. So we ran the thing naturally aspirated to establish the baseline and that way we could kind of compare how the blower was doing against the NA baseline to find out make sure that things were doing what they were supposed to do. So run in NA trim with the, basically this was effectively a cammed 4.8 liter. It had a little bit more compression because of the, instead of a flat top piston, it had a small dome on it, but the compression didn't increase dramatically. And this motor had been used a lot. So it was, it was a good little 4.8 liter. Run with that cam shaft with the JFR cam. The 4.8 liter produced 401.7 horsepower and 368.8 foot pounds of torque. I take that back. Yeah, 368.8, so 369 foot-pounds of torque. So here's what happened when we installed the, it was a Cadillac STS supercharger with the adapters on it, and we went through, if you, if you want to take a look, there's a video up on everything that happened with this, because we did a bunch of testing with it, and all of a sudden the prices all shot up on these on these uh, Cadillac blowers, which there were a bunch of them available on the market, and then the prices got jacked way up as after we did the video on it. But here's what happened, and I don't think we talked about this in the original video, but here's what happened. We installed the blower, and as you can see, and I think it's probably easier if I just have either horsepower or torque rather than both of them, because it'll be easier for you to identify this. So here are the two horsepower curves, and when we added the blower, obviously it added a lot of power. So down at 3,600 RPM, we went from 233 horsepower, 233 horsepower up to 346 horsepower. So we got a big jump in power. But what you can see up here is, and we were getting a kind of, kind of a consistent gain, which was what we would expect from that type of supercharger. And But you can see that the power started to level off here once we got past 44, 43, or 4400 RPM. And then it actually started to fall as we went out past 5000 RPM. 
And you might be thinking, well, the blower is just too small. And it, it's not, and that wasn't the problem. And I'll show you, we'll, we'll show you the boost curve associated with it. And you can kind of, kind of get a pretty good idea of what's going on. And, and what's really going on here is that the dampener is actually slipping on the, on the crankshaft. And it's the same thing as, that happens when, you, when the belt slips for the blower. If the belt isn't driving the blower relative to engine speed, you obviously start losing boost and you start losing power. So let's take a look at that boost curve supplied on this when our, crank, when our damper was spinning on the crankshaft. We only need to look at the boost curve on this thing to tell that this thing obviously is having some sort of slip problem. This is pretty typical. Now this, this boost curve should go fairly flat across and maybe be slightly rising depending on the size of the blower relative to the power output of the motor. But as we can see, it was fairly consistent from 3,500 out to 4,000 or so, but then started to fall off fairly rapidly. I mean, it dropped from a high of 11 and a half PSI all the way down to seven PSI. So that's a pretty good indication a falling boost curve like that, something's going on. We're getting either belt slippage, or in this case, it turned out to be that the, that the dampener was slipping on the crankshaft. And that's not a good situation, as we mentioned before, because if the dampener is spinning on the crankshaft, you can get metal transfer. It can damage the snout of the crank. Um, <laughs> that's how friction weld is, is, actually, is actually done if you can spin them fast enough, one relative to the other. So it's not a good situation. It's a really good idea to make sure that you pin these dampeners to the crank to eliminate the slippage. So let's jump in and show you how we're gonna pin the crankshaft, how you actually go about that. And then we can go ahead and show you what happened when we did pin the crankshaft and how it cured our boost problem and we made more power. So the first thing you need to do is remove the bolt securing the damper. So now once all the alignment tool that helps guide the drill bit, because it's gonna drill right in between, right at the interface of the crankshaft and the damper. So it's gonna cut half the damper and half the crankshaft, and that way we can put our pin in. And these little holes will guide it in the right spot. You see it locates on the crankshaft so it doesn't move. Once we tighten it down, it's there forever. Here's the drill bit we're gonna use. You wanna make sure that you drill in deep enough for the depth of the pin. If you don't, the pin will stick out and not allow you to bolt on the damper bolt. So now that our hole is drilled at the proper depth, we can put in our pin. You can see we've got half in the crank and half in the damper. This will stop it from going anywhere. So sometimes it's necessary, you know, we've got, we might just want to tap it in just a little bit, a little tappy tap. So you want to make sure that that is at least flush with the damper, because when you put the bolt on, then the bolt won't go on. It'll hold the bolt off to one side and that's not a good thing. So let's put the bolt on and we're all good. Final step, get that baby in. Now we're ready to rock and make some boost. Now that we've covered how to pin the damper to the crankshaft and eliminate slippage, let's show you what happens when you do that and fix an existing problem. This was our combination, our 4.8 liter before we pin the crank. This is the boost curve and then we'll go ahead and show you the power curves as well. But as you can see, we started out at 11 and a half pounds, but because it was spinning, because the damper was spinning on the crankshaft, it fell all the way down to seven pounds. After we pin the crank, as illustrated, 
here's what happened to our boost curve. And this is much more what we've come to expect, especially with the positive displacement supercharger with the STS blower. And this thing had a nice consistent boost curve. It was nice and relatively flat all the way across. And you can see all of this area past 4,000 RPM, you can see we had a lot more boost out at the top. It was a dramatic, I mean, it was seven pounds all the way up to, you know, again, we had a nice consistent 11 and a half pounds of boost. So let's take a look and see what happened this change, what this change in boost represented in terms of power. So here is our power output. And here's what it changed to. And the red is after we had pinned the dampener to the crankshaft. You can see we had a dramatic increase in power. Not only, obviously, did the boost improve, but the power output improved as well. It no longer fell off, it rose. As a matter of fact, this was just early on in the testing because once we saw that we were losing boost, we had to cure this slippage problem, which we did early on. We weren't even revving the motor all the way out. Ultimately, with that supercharger and a big throttle body, and once we'd done all the things and put E85 in it, we ultimately made this kind of power you could see 590 horsepower and 592 foot-pounds of torque with our supercharged 4.8 liter. But the reason that we were able to do this is only because we had cured this slippage problem. We never would have got to where we got to without first taking the steps necessary to make sure that we were getting all the boost supplied by the motor without the belt slipping or without the damper slipping. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this video? Pinning the dampener to the crankshaft and solving our boost problem. That's exactly what we did. When the dampener spins on the crankshaft, it's exactly the same as belt slippage. The result is the same. The dampener doesn't spin the blower, the blower doesn't provide boost, and then we don't get any power. So by pinning the dampener to the crankshaft, now when the crankshaft spins, the damper spins, and the blower spins, the result is more boost and more power. And pinning the crankshaft is so easy. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More tested coming up.